you've never been to the Pleasure Beach before, it's a 42 acre site with more rides than any other park in the world. June Aldrich, I don't know whether you know it, but when people come to Blackpool now, they always used to go up the tower. And they yeah, don't, but they're not they come now. here. This is now number one of yeah. Europe. Number one of the world. Yeah. Provides a complete day out for the family. Uh, with, although we've got the best thrill rides in the world, there's also family rides, there's free entertainment on park, there's also four full Las Vegas style production shows. Uh, so for a weekend or spending a holiday in Blackpool, you'd have a whale at the time, really. Pleasure Beach is really about fun, about happiness, and that possibly unfashionable word, gaiety, of making old people young again and giving them just the best day out of their lives. I, I came here as a child and I came here as a, as a young man. I never ever thought I'd, I'd end up working here, but I'm ever so glad I do now. After a week's hard work, it's good to just go crazy. And as you can see, I do. <laughs> It's what the Pleasure Beach is about, really, is, is sort of having people happy and making them laugh. no finer place to be in my mind and I work here and to be able to say that is something. Well you can come in and it's as, it, it's as dear or as cheap as you want the Pleasure Beach to be, you pay what you want to go on. More shows this year than ever, more spectacular this year than ever and now is the time to get your tickets as we take you to a world of fantasy, mystery and illusion. If you try to start at the top, you're not very successful as a rule, can be done if you have the money to do it, but uh, most successful businesses start in a smaller way and build up, and then you know what you're doing. It was Doris Thompson's father, William George Bean, who in 1896 laid the foundations of what was to become a multi-million pound entertainment empire. He began with just one ride, the Hotchkiss Bicycle Railroad, which he brought back with him from America. It was in that young and vibrant country the 19-year-old William Bean first became captivated by amusement parks and the new rides which were drawing huge crowds. Back in England, the ambitious entrepreneur cast around for the best place to make his fortune. Born a Londoner, his first inclinations were for the South Coast resorts. Then he heard about Blackpool, which was then a very up-and-coming seaside resort, very new and uh, he came up to see what it was all about and decided that this was a much better venue. And uh, from, from then on, he remained up here and started the Pleasure Beach in South Shore. It, South Shore then wasn't part of Blackpool. It became in, incorporated in 1910. But he started in South Shore and it was just sand really and just one or two other things operating, not very much. And he teamed up with the man who was there then, an older man. And from that it started, you see. First with the bicycle railway, then in very quickly they built the flying Maxim flying machine. 
that's still here today. It was built in 1904, and um, it's operating in exactly the same way today, and it is still very popular. From the start, William Bean was clear about his objectives. We wanted to found an American-style amusement park, the fundamental principle of which is to make adults feel like children again and to inspire gaiety of a primary innocent character. This proved to be a winning formula. Blackpool was booming and millions of holidaymakers arrived by train, looking for excitement and entertainment. The new rides which were springing up on the South Shore were a star attraction. In 1905, the Helter Skelter Lighthouse was built, a signpost for what was now known as the Pleasure Beach. In 1907, Blackpool got its first roller coaster, and in the same year, the popular water chute appeared with its daredevil gondoliers. They were. How they did it, I don't know, but they stood up all the time. They just go swishing down, standing up, and then it plunged into the water with a terrific splash, and you usually got pretty wet. <laughs> And then he ferried it to the side, and that was the ride. And the local people always used to call it, because prices were very different in those days, and money had a different value. So it was sixpence to go on that ride, and they always alluded it to it as the vanishing sixpence. In 1908, William Bean came back from one of his many trips to the United States. He was inspired. He was to build an even bigger and better roller coaster. Yes. Uh, that was, Coaster was the, the first of the really big rides before the First World War, this was. So I would be seven or eight or something like that. The cars were upholstered in red velvet and uh, they were very comfortable and very, very enticing. But unfortunately, the dyes weren't quite as good in those days. And when it rained, it did present a few problems. Rain or shine, the Pleasure Beach was packing them in, and William Bean was now the sole owner of England's premier American amusement park. Quick to respond to new trends, the Pleasure Beach opened a roller skating ring in 1909 as the craze swept the country. Every year, new rides appeared as William Bean ploughed his profits back into the company. In 1913, the newly built casino seemed to symbolize the Pleasure Beach's unprecedented success. The splendidly ornate exterior housed restaurants, billiard rooms, and a new 700-seater cinema and the new company offices. But the end of the carefree Edwardian era was rapidly approaching. War clouds were gathering in Europe. Things were never to be quite the same again. Oh, yes, they always came well-dressed and hats and gloves and umbrellas, if necessary. And the men wore their trilby hats or bowlers sometimes. You can see bowlers in those pictures. Oh, yes, nobody, nobody... It was a, a general holiday, and it was their special holiday for the year, you see, so they made the most of it, and they, that was their way of enjoying it, to be well-dressed for the occasion. After the war, the Spectatorium, first opened in 1910, put on a new show under a new name. There was this big building, big grey building, and it was called the Zebrouge. And we used to go in there as children and we watched these slides and the battles at the Great War. It was not until 1922 that things really started moving again on the Pleasure Beach. Two new rides opened that year the Noah's Ark and the Virginia Reel. Then in 1923, Bill Strickler from America, who had built many of the biggest rides on the Pleasure Beach, completed the Big Dipper with steeper runs and tighter bends than ever before. William Bean died in 1929 and his passing was mourned by the town he had given so much to. The succession of the Pleasure Beach passed to the newly married Doris Thompson and her husband Leonard. They were both determined to carry on in the tradition founded by her father. New talent from the USA was brought in to redesign the Pleasure Beach in the modern deco style. Renovation and rebuilding saw old rides revamped or replaced, while new attractions continued apace. Spectacular buildings appeared on the skyline, 
It was the English architect Joseph Emberton who more than anybody defined the new look of the Pleasure Beach. From his miniature railway and station in 1933, he went on to design the largest fun house in the world, the Ice Drome, and finally in 1939, his greatest triumph, the new casino. Today known as the Wonderful World Building, it stands on the site of the first casino. It was so well built that they couldn't pull it down. They had tractors on the promenade here, with wires, tried to pull it down, they couldn't. So in the finish, you wouldn't believe it, what I'm going to tell you, they blew the bloody thing up. During the war years, the Pleasure Beach stayed open all year round during weekends. It became a magnet for thousands of Allied soldiers and airmen. As well as uh, Americans and uh, regular troops, we had also the, it was the headquarters for the Polish Air Force. And uh, when the Poles suddenly appeared, overnight, nobody knew anything about it. The next morning, there were Poles walking about. And so my husband then had all the rides renamed in Polish. There was one ride we had. We don't have it now. We had, it's been substituted for another, but it was called the Bug. It was an American ride. And you know, in America, they usually call all insects. They always allude to them as bugs, you see. So this is the bug. And my husband had this, he sent for a dictionary, and he, Polish dictionary, he got this name put up. And whatever it was, we never knew, but every, all the Poles were all with laughter when they saw it. So my husband decided to keep it up. <laughs> Recovery was slow after the war. But by the 1950s, Blackpool and the Pleasure Beach were as popular as ever. In 1967, the log flume opened. The first major thrill ride since the war, it was then the biggest in the world and was rapidly followed by the Monster, the Astro Swirl, the Giant Slide and the Gold Mine. Leonard Thompson died in 1976, handing over a secure and profitable enterprise to the next generation. It is a family business. I think that's one of the secrets. It's a family business, and there's always something you can do. You may not like to ride the, the big ride, but you can ride a similar, a simple one, or you can enjoy something. I think that's one of the secrets. Today, the old and new stand side by side. William Bean's dream has been more than realized, and four generations on, and over 100 years later, the Pleasure Beach remains, as always, in good hands. My earliest memories of the Pleasure Beach, I suppose, were going on the rides in what was then called Achilles Park, which is now called Beaver Creek, uh, and um, when I was a very, very young age. But uh, I was brought up during the war, and of course you couldn't go away much on holidays, and so my holidays were back for Pleasure Beach, and what a what better place could you have a holiday in? One of my most favorite rides um, was the Reel which was just by the entrance of the Noah's Ark. Uh, it was a fantastic ride, and we was thinking of uh, rebuilding one one of these days, because it was the last one left in the world, and uh, it'd be fun to have that one again. But the Pepsi Max big one is still a phenomenal ride, and one of my favorites. My name is Teddy Askey, and I am known as Little Teddy. I've been, worked on the Pleasure Beach since 1958, and I became a train driver in 1963. The changes on the Pleasure Beach since I first arrived have been fantastic. We've built some great big rides and we've actually kept some of the older rides. They might have been relocated, but we've still got them. The Pleasure Beach Express is a, a miniature railway pulled by one of three locals we have, two Pacifics and one tanker. I actually saw, or first saw this train as I was a child when I, we used to come to Blackpool uh, with my family. I uh, never dreamed in one day I'd actually drive it. But when I did join the Pleasure Beach Company, I chased it the moment I came. Hi, my name is Mike Bamba. My family's been down on the Pleasure Beach now selling seafood for 60 years. We started off and my grandmother came down. My father worked with my grandmother, now I'm working with my father. So we've been down here a fair while. Um, and my father, he's the longest serving concessionaire on the Pleasure Beach. And he comes from all over the country, basically. We've got mussels from Ireland, uh, oysters from 
up in Scotland with uh, prawns from Greenland, um, cockles from the River Dee, um, whelks and crabs from Norfolk, Kingsland area that way. So it's, you know, it's from all over the country. We don't sell as many oysters as we used to do years ago, uh, but we still sell a lot of the traditional, you know, well-established stuff, cockles, whelks, mussels, shrimps. You know, it's, uh, but people's tastes do tend to vary. I, I've been on the Pleasure Beach over 25 years. I think I've run this one here for about oh, over 20 years anyway. With, with the headgear, um, the Arabs who, who come from uh, Saudi and what have you, they seem to come over and stay in London and then they come to Blackpool and they come on the Pleasure Beach, it seems to attract them the Pleasure Beach and um, every sort of year or two years they just sort of turn up and they bring us some headgear and authentic sort of things from Arabia. At the Pleasure Beach we have various historic nostalgic rides which our guests have remembered from when they were kids and we'll still look after those and, and they're still as popular as they've ever been. This is the original Hiram Maxim captive flying machine. It was, one of, it was one of three built originally. There's one built at Crystal Palace, one at Pleasantland Southport and this is the only one that's going today. It is a po very popular ride and, and it's a family ride of course we're, we're adults and children can can use it for the price of the ride it, the cost of the, the fare on it i think it's value for money compared with other rides it doesn't look quite as high as it actually gets when you're up there you do actually feel as if you're flying and of course it's the center of fugal force keeps you in there but uh, when you look down and see nothing holding you in you know it's uh, it's quite it's quite scary really <laughs> Roller coasters are one of the classic rides in the amusement park armory, you might say. They've been going since the very beginnings of amusement parks. Other rides come and go, but carousels and roller coasters go on forever. They frighten people, and in many respects, people come to amusement parks to be frightened. They say a bit of, you know, a bit of fright, you should go and keep your heart going. <laughs> you're never too old and you're never too young to go on it. Well, it's very fast, very invigorating, just good fun. What can you say? This is absolutely fantastic. You get more adrenaline through this, you, honestly. Holding on all the time, it, it's every minute you, you, you've something. And you're using different parts of your body, you know, when you're finished. The adrenaline is, is unbelievable. We're worth a drink now. And we thought, oh, it's going to be a doddle. And then it just went for it. When I first took over as managing director, it was quite apparent that by far the most popular rides that we had and the rides we were most famous for were our roller coasters. So we built on strength, really, and we just decided to build more, bigger, and better roller coasters. Pleasure Beach has uh, 11 roller coasters, which is more than any other amusement park or theme park in the world. Uh, most people think America has the biggest and the best, but here in Blackpool, we've got them. In the late 70s, uh, the very first uh, of the new generation of looping roller coasters were developed in America. I went on one in California and thought, we must have one of those here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And so we, we were very pleased that we were the first amusement park in the whole of Europe to bring a looping roller coaster over from America. That was the revolution, still popular today. We've been on the revolution, it's brilliant. Real scary! Yeah, so scary. We're going on again, it's that good. Yeah. We're going to go on now. You've got to have a strong stomach, especially when you're going upside down. Especially and then you think it's over, and you get to the other end, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> back you go, and it's all back to front, but it's really good. Mm. I've been on the revolution, and you go backwards as well. And you, you can't tell what's going to happen next.
people are getting more and more sophisticated. And as the amusement park industry is in a way quite a mature industry, they're constantly looking for something a bit better and a bit faster and a bit more daring than anyone else has been on. He went over to America and went on their biggest ride, which is similar to this. And he was so oh, thrilled, no, he says, I'm going to have one, only bigger. And uh, yeah, I admire him for that. Building the tallest, fastest roller coaster in the world, I don't think we needed much research to tell us it was going to be a winner. And when the ride was, this particular ride was being built, we came here every day throughout the yeah, winter. Yeah, we did in winter. We watched oh, every... Oh, we watched oh. every piece go up. Yes, we did. Right to the last piece was done at daybreak, early one morning. And I was the only one there with my camera that took photographs of the final yeah. piece going up. The highest peak. Wonderful. Yeah, well, one and too. the chappy that was on the top, he waved to me. This roller coaster at Blackpool, it's one of the tallest in the world. And it's really, really fast. It's one of the fastest in the world. It goes about 85 miles per hour. Well, the big end is an experience. That's the only way to describe it. It's an experience of a lifetime. The first drop, it's absolutely brilliant. Words can't describe it. It's really, really good. Loads of fun. I said to Mr. Thompson, no, I shall not be going on the ride. The doctor hasn't advised it. I'd love to go on. Well, we've been on loads of roller coasters all over the country, and this is definitely the best. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. My name's Andy Hine, the president of the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain, which is a club designed to unite roller coaster enthusiasts from all over the world. The, the club itself has many trips throughout the year. We always um, have one big trip at Blackpool called the Blackpool Bash, which is where we bring about 300 or so people to the Pleasure Beach to enjoy the rides. Uh, September 1992, I got married on the Grand National Roller Coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, it was always my favourite roller coaster, and I just wanted to uh, sort of join the two loves together. I love roller coasters, I love the Grand National, and of course, I love my wife. And it was a way of combining the two on the day. When we first came to Blackpool about uh, five years ago, the Grand National was the ride, uh, and it was always, uh, you know, exciting to go on. Well, if, if you've got friends on the other car. It's, it's good fun exactly. shouting over to each other. Yeah. Who's going to win? <laughs> we want to be the winners. It's very different in that uh, it takes you up very sharply. Uh, you get to the top uh, and it goes down extremely fast. And from then on, you know, it's a complete um, roller coaster ride. Uh, the children love it. It's fast, but we think it's safe. They're just one of the best rides you can have. They create a, a thrill, sort of, which goes back to our whole ethos of making adults feel like children again. More shows this year than ever, more spectacular this year than ever, and now is the time to get your tickets. Entertainment for everyone, for the little ones, big ones, young ones, old ones, the mums, the dads, the grandmas, granddads, aunties, uncles, nephews and nieces. Entertainment for all the family, here at Blakepool Pleasure Beach, the number one amusement park. Here at the Pleasure Beach, we've had um, live entertainment for over 59 years. The reason why my grandfather brought the ice show to Blackpool was the, the flash and the excitement of steel on ice and to introduce live entertainment to the public that came to Blackpool. He was also very involved with entertainment and had a dear love for it which has been followed, of course, by my grandmother and my father. The ice show this year is a particularly wonderful show because we have champions from all over the world in the show. We have the five times Finnish champion, Ole Jaskalainen, working for us this year. 
and the four times Italian champion uh, Fabrizio Garatoni and also the four times Spanish champion working for us. Um, all of these people are Europeans that bring excitement and fun to the world of ice skating and also drama. styles of shows. We have um, Mystique of course here in the horseshoe and Hot Ice and also we have On Park Entertainment with costume characters which are there to entertain the children. Oh come on everybody, let's start the party! Yeah we have Bradley Beaver show which uh, is a live costume character show which the it's all Bradley, Bradley's friends, and, and uh, the kids love that. They really do. Bradley Beaver was introduced into the park probably about uh, 10 years ago when we wanted to create more of an atmosphere that children would like, and we have costume characters wandering around the park. And he's become the mascot of the, the kiddies' park, which is now called Bradley Beaver Theme Park within the Pleasure Beach. He's a, a fun character and he's great to sort of be used to as part of the decor and bring it into sort of like a village that you're walking into Bradley Beaver's sort of village which he uh, lives and plays in. I think the Pleasure Beach has a very high standard of entertainment and has done so for many years. And I think it's important that we maintain a high level of entertainment here too because a lot of people can't always travel around the world and it's important that they have the opportunity to get the highest and the best quality of entertainment here at Blackpool and of course here at the Pleasure Beach. People still want live entertainment. I mean, with great respect, there's a lot of good things on the television, but they still want to go out, they want to dress up and go out. They're here to enjoy themselves. And I personally enjoy myself, and I want everybody else to enjoy themselves. I have an amazing staff who are all really creative and really back me in all my ideas and help me see through my projects to the end. All of them work extremely long hours as the entertainment industry is not a nine to five job. Unfortunately for the people that work with me, it ends up being virtually 24 hours for some periods of time, especially when we're in production. When I took over, I decided to broaden the base of the park and to make it a full day out experience. We also decided to make Blackpool Pleasure Beach the culinary capital of Blackpool. We have 50 places where you can eat at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, from hot dog stalls, full service restaurants, bars, American diners, pizza bars, places to suit all different tastes. And we're very, very proud of the food that we now provide at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. First thing in the morning, the gravities are the big difference. We've got to walk it every morning from one end right the way round to the other, checking all the rails, making sure they're all secure, the tracks, there's no rot, defects, visual support, we check all them, uh, dog blocks, pins, make sure everything's in its proper place and everything's secured. It's all for safety, make sure that nothing's loose, nothing's falling off. You've got to be fairly fit and not afraid of heights, basically. The rice checked each morning for safety purposes, uh, such as the riggings, uh, the oil levels are 
or at the correct level, they have to be topped up, of course. It's all pretty basic, simple engineering. Very little problems with this ride. It, it really is a credit to British engineering. Um, well, it's the sort of work that I like doing when it's involved with cartooning and that, and that because it gives a lot of the children a great deal of pleasure and that, and this is what the, the theme park's all about. We could be doing uh, cartooning for the bowler drill and that, with some very large signs for that by the Watson Road Bridge, and a big variety from uh, being scenic to actual large cut out uh, wooden uh, lettering. We do illusions, uh, we, we cater for the Pots and the Ice shows. Uh, it's quite vast, there's no specific job, it's, it's a yeah. creation of everything really. I mean, one minute you can be uh, sticking bows up on the casino buildings for <laughs> centenary year. The next minute you can be <laughs> down in the caves in the gold mine, sort of uh, digging up what you can and uh, trying to repaint stuff. So. to get uh, the realism for the children as much as it is for the adults because the children are quite receptive to what's real and what isn't and what should be real and they'll let you know in, a, in no uncertain terms that uh, if something doesn't look like it should they'll tell you anything that will give us some ideas of what exists around the world if we're theming rides from around the world we have to quickly go in We've got nature books so that animals do look like what they should do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's very important to have quite a research library here in the back. We've got uh, mechanics, we've got uh, people good at with pneumatics, we've got great fiberglasses, artists, model makers, so yeah, we're painters, we're very varied. Some rides can cater for the, the children, uh, like we've got the kiddies part that sort of dedicates itself to the children, and, uh, but you've got to sort of work for the adults as well, you can't just... Uh, stick everything up for the kids you know adults come here just to enjoy themselves as much as the children do we've got to cater for everybody
there's no two days the same here. In fact, there's no two hours the same. There's always something different happening and you're always learning all the time. Every minute you're learning. Because something different will happen in five minutes that you don't know anything about. So you learn, and you learn as you go along. And I think that's the most rewarding part of the job. It certainly doesn't get bored here at Blackwood Pleasure Beach. What I wanted was um, to have the train coming through the station. I didn't want to have a solid end. I wanted to be it to be a sort of open station. So that's why it's got glass on both sides. And that you, the port, the portcullis effect was the idea that it, it's open in the summer. So there's a guy sitting in front of a little glass window, and in the winter, both of them come down. So it's a completely sealed building. So that the portcullis actually slots over the track, so you can use the whole building as storage in the winter. That's the plan. And also, the building is supposed to be sort of part of the track, so therefore it's not diverting attention from the track. It's in the same direction. It's in the same uh, angle because there's a slight tilt on the building as well because the, ang uh, the track is actually angled, and um, and it had to be cantilevered to leave the space for the rides below. And uh, the wood and the steel was to the wood was to soften the steel effect of the, of the ride, so it had a kind of softness to it, and it ages well, and, and the stainless steel was to reflect the steelness of the, the ride. It could have been a square box if, if that's what people wanted, but my father said, have a go at designing something, and I just, I came up with a design and he really liked it. He didn't sort of give me a brief and say, I think it should be on this side of the road, or this side of the tracks, or that side of the tracks, he just said, do a building and see what it looks like. So I came up with a, an initial sketch and a, and a model, and, and he quite liked it, so took it from there. The development of Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the last hundred years is interesting. In a way, it's an ever-changing panoply of new rides and attractions. But when you look behind the facades, a lot of the things have, in fact, been very similar, or new versions of an old theme. I predict that in the next hundred years, Probably that plan, that way the park has developed, will just continue. We'll have bigger, better, faster roller coasters, but there will still be roller coasters. There'll be bigger and faster carousels, but there have always been carousels. I, I think it's very important to, uh, to reinvest into the Pleasure Beach because our, our customers are getting more and more sophisticated and, and they, they come year after year after year and they're looking for something different each time. So it's, it's, it's up to us, really, to, to reinvest in, in our park. And this is what the, uh, the Thompson family, who own the, own the group of parks, this is what they always do. Blackpool wouldn't be, wouldn't be a patch on what it is now. It would have been just central, the, the tower. But the Thompsons and their money, well, I reckon they all lot should be knighted. I see the provision of food being more important than possibly it has in the last hundred years. I can see the shops and the development of shops here to be more important. I can see shows also playing a big development in the park. But the basic appeal will still, I think, always be the biggest collection of roller coasters in the entire world. Um, interactive rides will be part of the future. Simulators will be a part of the future, but can't take away from actually riding a real roller coaster. A simulator of a roller coaster is not the real thing. Pleasure Beach is the third biggest tourist attraction in the world and uh, it's the second most visited place in Europe after the Vatican, but uh, we figure that the Pope has an unfair advantage on us.
you ask me what I like best on Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I would have to say it is riding the very best roller coasters I've ever found anywhere. I think if anything sums up our mission in life, it's to provide one word, happiness.